Hello and welcome to our thought for the day and I'm going to bring a quote for you from a book that I read recently called I Am Strong by Lamar Hardwick. The book's about coming to terms with our weakness and trusting in God's power at work in us. The title I Am Strong is inspired by uh, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul says, He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That's why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. One of the phrases in the book that stood out for me is this. Our deepest fear is that no matter how good God thinks we are, it's not enough for us. Hardwick points to a surprising biblical character who did not trust in God's revelation of his identity, but gave in to fear. Now, there are a few in the Bible who illustrate that, but this one is Nebuchadnezzar. God said to Nebuchadnezzar through the prophet Daniel, interpreting his dream of a strange statue, Daniel says this, Your majesty, you are the king of kings. The God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. He has made you ruler over all. You are that head of gold. The king's response was to honour Daniel. And he said, surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries. But in an extraordinary turnaround, Nebuchadnezzar then sets up a 90 foot gold statue, an image of himself. And everyone was forced to bow to it at pain of being thrown into a furnace. What on earth happened to Nebuchadnezzar? Well, certainly there was no healthy self-image, and it wasn't very healthy for those around him either. Nebuchadnezzar did not trust in God's revelation of his identity, but gave in to fear, which with his power led to a real mess. Fear about identity can lead us to produce a false image of ourselves if you like, a larger than life but false image. As we look to cover up any weaknesses that we feel. Nebuchadnezzar was given a revelation of his identity from God through Daniel. And God gives you one too through the Bible. He sees such value in you that he sent Jesus into the world to give his life to rescue you. If you've trusted in him, then through faith you have become his child, loved by him forever. We are his workmanship, created by him for good works. There is treasure in you. So let me encourage you to take time to listen afresh to God through his word about who he has created you to be and listen to his spirit who speaks more also to us about our individual calling. But Paul says in the same letter, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is is from God and not from us. God sees gold in us. It's Jesus' life in us, but it comes with the clay of human limitation and weakness. And it actually helps us to point others to him to find their true identity in what he says of them. Lamar Hardwick said, the journey to strength is a journey to weakness. And Hardwick's journey included recognising his autism, which he said, doesn't make me weak, it makes me human. This journey from weakness to strength is one that requires the traveller to accept limitations as well as appreciate progress. I like that balance. Accept limitations without punishing ourselves or needing to cover them up. And appreciate progress by grace, trusting in God's power, doing what we thought might never be possible. Embracing our own humanity helps us to more consistently embrace the humanity of others too and to show them grace. So hold on to how good 
God thinks you are. It is enough. No false image or cover-up needed. God's power is made perfect in weakness. Our limitations show that it's him who's at work. And in our limitations, let's receive God's grace. And through learning that, give grace to others. God bless you.